So, Professor Ali is Associate Professor IIT Delhi, and his area of research is bio-renewable chemicals, uh, heterogeneous catalysis, development of solid oxide fuel cells. He has recipient of a uh, few awards, Teaching Excellence Award, IIT Delhi, Bioenergy Award for Cutting Edge Research, Excellence in Basic Research and Development in Chemical Engineering. He has several patents in his name. Uh, he has been, and uh, those patents have, have also been involved in technology transfer. Uh, one process involves the fermentation, uh, which means enzymatic catalysis of uh, Beta-lecton by integrated catalytic processes for biomass. Second is process for the preparation of hydric alcohols. Also conversion of two pyron into two non uh, some ring opening reaction, uh, decarboxylation process. So uh, Professor Ali uh, has been a good friend. We met at a Gordon conference. And today he's going to talk to us on thinking catalysis step-by-step step on transition metal surfaces. Very, very interesting title. Dr. Ali, I welcome you and please you can may start your talk. So first we'll check your audio and video if you would like to share. I'll share uh, my screen now. Yes, yes, that's fine. Yes, just full please. screen mode. Yes, we can clearly see everything. Your voice is also clear. I think you should, you can go ahead. Yes. So thank you, uh, Sudhanshu. I'm, I really appreciate this, that you are doing it in this hard time. I kept thinking that how to do this, but you have shown us the way how to do this. Uh, I was really happy to see some of the pictures of IIT Gandhinagar near the river. So uh, I'm sure you are enjoying the fresh air. Uh, even uh, these times are not really good uh, uh, in health matters, but uh, uh, I can see some really good, uh, beautiful pictures. So I visited, as Sudhanshu remembers, in 2013, uh, Gandhinagar campus, and I'm looking forward to visit again. Uh, these pictures are really inviting. Um, I would like to give a brief inter introduction of our work here. Uh, I kept the title uh, a bit different, uh, which is about thinking uh, catalysis and uh, not just uh, all together, but thinking each step clearly and thoughtfully. Uh, and our group is involved in this, uh, in this philosophical thinking on catalysis uh, in many ways by apply employing experiments as well as theory. So we do uh, theoretical, uh, uh, work on DFT and mechanistic exploration on catalyst materials. We apply uh, ab initio microkinetic modeling, and we are also now working on machine learning and catalyst design approaches. And this is all combined with proof of concept experiments. So sometimes people think us as only theoreticians, but we also have a full-fledged uh, experimental lab. So whatever theoretically we are thinking, we are also applying in experiments. Uh, in experiments, we tend to look at biorenewable platform chemicals development. Uh, we have an effort going on on methane to aromatics development. Um, uh, for a long time, we have been working on uh, developing electrode materials for solid oxide fuel cells. And recently, we also started working on batteries. Uh, other catalysis areas are like alkane to olefins and uh, CO2 conversion. And different types of reactions, uh, which you all catalysis community know well, is dehydrogenation, hydrogenation, oxidation, hydro deoxygenation. And specifically, the focus is the catalyst in front of you is the transition metal catalyst and how you make alloys uh, with transition metal catalyst. So that my that is my focus today of this talk. Uh, we have picked up few areas which where we have developed some thrust, which is uh, one focus area is catalysis in complex reaction environments. I'll speak more about it uh, later in my talk. Uh, then this whole rational thinking on how to design catalysts step by step. Uh, machine learning, of course, is a new area and emerging area in catalysis we are, where we are trying to contribute. And then some areas we have picked up like catalyst design for natural gas valorization. And also we have picked up a focused area on mechanistic explorations on thin film electrodes for high temperature fuel cells. So these are the areas which we have picked up in last uh, seven years. And we are, we are trying to contribute uh, in the community. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction. If you all uh, have seen experiments or have done experiments in catalysis, 
since they are really tedious you really if you want to test like high throughput screening of several catalysts uh, you might need uh, uh, really big reactors you need uh, automated sampling uh, to make these catalysts and then reactor like monolith reactors where you can fill in many catalysts and then each catalyst needs to be characterized by different characterization techniques like tpdr ftir tem so you know that there is a lot of work involved even one catalyst development it can take two years or maybe a phd uh, to complete so uh, experimental protocols are long and tedious of course they are still uh, very standard and uh, reliable uh and then we apply to understand the rates uh, expressions in catalysis and uh, the old is gold so langmuir wood is always the key uh, kinetics which is explained on heterogeneous surfaces in this kinetics we use uh, long differential ordinary differential equations we apply approximation at like a steady state solutions and we take quasi equilibrium uh, approximations to understand one step as rate determining step and then we call the whole rate of reaction as the rate of the rate determining steps to reduce the expression and so as to solve it mathematically that is also not sufficient as you can see that the expression usually is long so then we take more approximation like uh, irreversible step approximations most abandoned reaction intermediate and then we also can assume steps with similar rates or we can assume nearly empty surface depending upon the conditions in which we are running the reaction uh, so all of this may lead to very simplified expressions like this which you can measure so something which you can measure uh, you would want to write your rate expressions uh, as terms of measurables because if an engineer is sitting in front of reactor he just look at that rate expressions and he knows if i change this parameter how is my rate going to change so these are really reduced and simplified expressions uh, but they are always involving uh, several layers of approximation so we are trying to challenge or the community in catalysis community uh, for last 10 years i would say is trying to challenge this notion of simplified expressions by ab initio microkinetic modeling where you think about the whole reactions happening on the catalyst surface uh, explaining the turnovers with respect to descriptors so the descriptors following the sabatier principle could be like carbon binding energy on the surface and you want to write the turnover frequencies in the form of sabatier plot and you understand that for optimum catalyst reactivity that descriptor for example the carbon should bind on the surface neither too strong or not to uh, be okay so you you want an optimum in binding so you understand that the reactants should come on the surface they should react and then they should desorb and should not stay for long otherwise they will cover the surface so heterogeneous catalysis in that sense is unique in order to maintain turnovers you don't want very high binding or very low binding of descriptors this one dimensional descriptor plot uh, introduced 100 year ago by sabatier is now converted uh, in our ab initio microkinetic modeling in two descriptor plots so for example instead of one descriptor we can also think of oxygen binding energy as another descriptor and then the same volcano plot is shown as a blue and red uh, two dimensional two dimensional plot where you can see the red region is showing very high turnovers while the blue region is showing very low turnovers we have published few papers so there are some citations for that uh with this thinking i would like to introduce what is going inside uh, this abish initio microkinetic modeling so the idea is that instead of assuming any rate controlling step uh, just by taking the steady state approximation you will solve all the differential equations so all the ordinary differential equations without assuming any rate controlling step because a reaction is not necessarily controlled by one step this notion of rate determining step Uh, has to be broken in many steps and there could be an essential degree of rate control exercised by different steps and that's where we are trying to understand how these different steps exercise different degree of rate control so the single descriptor plot is converted now into a two descriptor plot where we look for which catalyst for example here for this reaction rhodium and rhodium are lying in the eye of the volcano so they are the best by solving all the differential equations so let's suppose a cat, uh, heterogeneous catalytic reaction is about 50 steps 50 elementary steps so from ab initio density functional theory calculation we calculate uh, activation energies and reaction energies for all the steps and then by solving all ordinary differential equations we 
try to calculate the turnover frequencies coming from a comprehensive modeling approach. So this is different than the previous, uh, the widely used uh, langmuir hinshelwood type of kinetics. Now, another concept is introduced in the last uh, 15 years, which is interpolation principle and design of bimetallic alloys. So for example, this uh, reaction for ammonia synthesis, uh, Norskov's group showed uh, if, for example, if moly is not working because it has very high binding for nitrogen, and then you have cobalt, which is a very low binding of nitrogen. So they think about very intuitively that if I can alloy moly with co cobalt, then I can get to a Sabatier optimum because the binding will be optimum for nitrogen uh, for these two metals if we alloy cobalt and moly. So a rational design of biometallic alloys, so while I was doing it for a long time, by hit and file approach of mixing two metals. Now there is a rational idea is emerging that if you know that one metal is binding weak to the descriptor and other metal is binding strong, then you can reach to the volcano by alloying these two metals. And in that sense, you are trying to optimize the bonding energy. So this rational is also can be incorporated in ab initio microkinetic modeling. And I'll show you how. Let me take an example here, which I'm showing you uh, is a non-oxidative dehydrogenation of biomass derived alcohols. Of course, uh, you can introduce an application here for, from biomass. Uh, you get all different kinds of alcohol molecules. This is an industrially important reactions where you want to convert alcohols uh, to aldehydes to get different functionality that can be converted into value added chemicals. So all these alcohols, whether they are primary alcohols or secondary alcohols, you can convert into first into ketone functionality or aldehyde functionality, and then you can make value added chemicals. Of course, you can also do it esterification reactions to make esters, but all require the conversion of alcohols to aldehyde. So we took it as an example. For this reaction, if you look at the experimental trends, you will see, for example, this alcohol going to ketone platinum is the most widely used catalyst for this reaction. Rest of the metals are reactive, iridium, rhenium, but platinum is the most reactive. Uh, few catalysts like copper are showing reactivity, but they are not that reactive. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one trend which is shown in the experiments. So taking a clue, we move forward. We see also while copper alone was not very active, we see some emerging trends on copper, for example, uh, recently on single atom alloy catalyst. This is a recent interest in catalysis community to understand the activity of single atom alloys that these single emit alloys are really good in catalyzing the CH bond activation in selective non-NODH reactions. And they showed that if you add a single atom of nickel in copper host material, you can actually increase or uh, decrease the activation energy for this material. So if you add just 0.001% of nickel in copper, you see how much uh, the activation energy is shifting to about 47 kilojoule per mole, per mole as compared to the other catalyst, which is about 70 kilojoule per mole. So there is a, a significant shift if you add just a single atom of nickel, and we are really interested why this works. So similar trend is also shown on platinum copper single atom alloys. For example, yield of acetaldehyde is increased significantly on introducing a single platinum atom in copper host. So while copper itself was not that active, as soon as you add a single atom of nickel or you add a single atom of platinum, you can increase the activity of copper. And that's really exciting uh, trend. So this, these are very recent uh, experimental trends. We started doing some theory on that uh, using a model compound. Of course, the model compounds are simpler. So we started uh, with the, uh, the most simple one, which is ethanol, uh, of, uh, where we can understand two different routes where if it goes through a non-oxidative dehydrogenation of ethanol, we make acetaldehyde. And if we do dehydration, you make ethylene. So you want to avoid this product while you want to increase the selectivity of this product. We started building our model and we have used uh, reactions. For example, the entire network of reaction was employing more than 50 reactions. Uh, in general, you can see we start with all possibility. The ethanol on the catalyst surface may go an alpha uh, OH bond scission, so it can make CH3CH2O. It can also go a CO bond scission, so it can make CH3CH2. It can go an alpha H bond scission, so it can make CH3CHOH. 
and then it can also go a beta uh, CC bond uh, scission, which is making CH3 plus CH2 or CH2 away. So you think about all such possibility, first alpha H or first H and all these, and you will develop a reaction that works about more than 50 steps which you write for uh, the surface reactions. That is listed uh, in the published paper. Um, and I'm showing you a representative diagrams of all these reactions. Uh, However, in this reaction, before I go further, I would like to highlight that the key route is this, which is shown in the green color, and that is coming from the experience of modeling, that uh, this is uh, ethanol is first going an OH bond scission to make CH3CH2O, and then it is going an alpha CH bond scission to make CH3CHO. So you need to first break the OH bond, and then you need to break one CH bond. If you do further dehydrogenation of CH3CHO, you make CH3CO. And this is the key route. And you have to tell your catalyst, for example, it can do all these possibilities to selectively do this. First, break the OH bond, which is converting it into CH3CH2O. And then you break the CH bond and convert this into CH3CHO. Don't do it further. Just to stop there. Don't go here. Otherwise, you will not get the product. So you want to desorb this product. You want to break the OH bond, and you want to break one CH bond, not another CH bond. How do you do it? How do you control this reactivity at the molecular level is really exciting. We look at what kind of sites are active in this catalysis. We see a clear particle size effects. For example, in experiments where we are uh, on reducing the particle size, we increase the turnover frequency. So there is a structure sensitivity in this reaction. And also some surface science experiments, which we are showing if you have a, like a plain uh, copper one on one surface and you roughen it, you make some edges or steps on this surface, then you increase the reactivity. For example, the roughened surface shows much higher yield of uh, acetaldehyde. So these clues are giving us a model that it should be a step sites which should be reactive for this reaction. So in our model, we are trying to incorporate the reactivity of the step sites, which may really help. Uh, in this catalysis. So we give different alloys, uh, which is uh, a termination and a termination. In a B terminations, you can see uh, we have more of the B molecules on the surface, B atoms on the surface, while in the A terminations, the B atoms are buried inside in the subsurface. And both these terminations are employed in the models. We started building our models. That means we are solving about 50 plus uh, elementary reaction steps in ordinary differential equations. And that model is giving us the final turnover frequencies. I'm showing the log of turnover frequencies with respect to the descriptors, which are oxygen binding energy and carbon binding energy on the surface in the two dimensional volcano plot. The most reactive elements are lying right in the red regions, which is platinum, palladium, copper, and the rest of the metals are here, rhenium, and those which are not really active are lying here, which is gold and silver. You can see clearly that platinum is the most reactive, followed by copper, palladium, cobalt, like that. And then we have the trend for the side product where silver and gold are more active as compared to the other metals. So this is the primary uh, uh, trends, which we are now doing a high throughput screening of several transition metal catalyst surfaces, the 211 surface for this reaction and we are seeing a clear trend emerging for this reaction. We started with copper and I said that you look at that route which I showed you. First, you need to do an OH bond scission to make CH3CH2O and then you need to do a CH bond scission to get your product which is acetaldehyde. You don't want to break the CH bond. You don't want to go to CH3CO. You want to stop here that tell your surface to do this. We see the coverage plots. We see a very unique trend for copper. For example, for copper, you will see that copper is lying in this red region. And this is happening only for copper. Rest of the metals are lying in the blue region. And this coverage is for CH3CH2O. So copper is not able to break the CH bond. It's not making the product because you have the coverage of CH3CH2O. The reason is simple. The CH bond activation on copper is really difficult as compared to the other metals, which is a known thing about copper, that copper doesn't activate easily the CH bond. So what is the principle behind designing copper-based catalysts is if you can add a metal which can break the CH bond, like nickel, palladium, platinum, rhodium, you can reduce the CH bond activation barriers, and that will result in the reactivity of copper 
for example suddenly when you introduce palladium copper nickel or rhodium you will see the coverage of ch3 ch2o is moving more towards the blue region and once that is happening you will see that will show much higher reactivity copper was less reactive while copper platinum was more reactive rhodium is also reactive nickel and some reactivity is also improved in copper platinum palladium so that explains why even a single atom of platinum is improving in single atom alloys for example in the experiments why this reactivity is improved suddenly when you introduce a platinum atoms because you are able to break that ch bond that is improving the reactivity on the surface this whole approach can be really the high throughput put approach can be really accelerated by machine learning ways and we have recently implemented uh, by using some machine learning algorithms to predict all these binding energies on these surfaces so on the transition metal surfaces for example single atom alloys of copper we are predicting oxygen binding energies and similarly also for carbon binding energies and build these models and this we have shown this entire approach starting from sabatier principle and how you pick up metals and how you rationally design alloys whether you are designing the bimetallic alloys and you are designing the single metal alloys how this whole rational idea can be implemented using machine learning implements to crunch out these new and novel design of alloys and this is really exciting because we can show that this can be done with how throughput screening with more features in catalysis for example in catalysis so far in the surface science approach d band center is considered to be an important feature while other features are ignored so narskov group has proposed this idea on the d band centers and that can be engineered by molecular level surface engineering in catalysis but we are now implementing more features for example now in the machine learning models we have surface energy ionization energy density electronegativity all the periodic properties of elements and we can see what feature has more control for example surface energy is more important here as compared to for example d band center and other uh, features so this is this this these algorithms are showing us new paradigm in catalysis that we can think beyond d band theory and look for all the features all together as a input for this uh, machine learning models to predict the binding energies so this is another exciting approach which we recently implemented see the results the same metals where we showed for copper rhodium copper nickel copper platinum copper palladium using a microkinetic model from dft approach we can also predict similar numbers and trends from machine learning approach within a few seconds using your laptop once you build the model so that is really exciting that instead of working for a year to build this now high throughput uh, screening can be done in few seconds as we shown in nodh implementation now if you look at the other paradigm the other metals what palladium platinum rhodium nickel rhodium copper rhenium all of them are dehydrogenating so they actually go all the way up to ch3co so if you look at the coverage of ch3co they start with ethanol they make ch3 ch2o they do first ch hydrogenation but they know once they you they know how to activate the ch bond they go all the way to ch3 co so they don't stop here they give you this so in order to make these products engineered surfaces for these metals that you can get non oxidative dehydrogenation of ethanol to make acetaldehyde you want to stop here and for that you need to moderate the dehydrogenation activity of these metals so the idea here is reverse or opposite of copper where you need to introduce a de dehydrogenating metals here you want to moderate the activity for dehydrogenation so that you don't stop here you stop here so the, for with this idea we started with nickel and we added tin which is very inactive uh, metal so when we added tin to nickel uh, we can moderate the reactivity of nickel uh, the dehydrogenation activity so you now you see the coverage of ch3co which is covering the surface of nickel now suddenly it is out of it and nickel tin is showing no coverage of ch3co so you are try to stop the reaction right here and you are getting the product and how do you get it you see in the reactivity diagram nickel was not reactive at all but as soon as you add tin you see very high reactivity for tin uh, nickel alloys and that is not tested experimentally so computational screening now is showing a way or new catalyst design where you can implement this and show that few alloys like new alloys like nickel tin can be engineered and the surface could be modeled so that you can get the high reactivity for this reaction 
I would present the whole idea here is that the whole rational designing idea is all about controlling the surface coverage of key intermediates. For example, in copper, this coverage was important. In nickel is this one. For example, nickel was showing the red region for CH3CO. So it's going all the way here. As soon as you introduce tin, you get more and more coverage of CH3, CH2O and less and less of CH3CO. And you kind of get the reactivity in the middle, which is CH3, CHO, which is the balance between the two coverages. So this whole idea, when you look at the entire reaction network, you are seeing the degree or essential rate control is exercised by this pathway. And this can be analyzed by a degree of uh, rate control analysis of the key species. For example, this one we did for platinum, we have screened all the P-block elements, most of them, and transition metals, screening huge amount of uh, uh, catalyst materials, novel alloys materials, and we can see what is the degree of rate control exercised by CH3CO. And by engineering the surface with different alloys, you can come up with new biometallic compositions, applying also economic filter because platinum is expensive. So something which is 20% less than the cost of the platinum, and we came up with four alloys, platinum copper, platinum zinc, platinum gallium and platinum germanium. However, in this experiments have only tested platinum zinc and platinum copper for dehydrogenation of alkanes, not for alcohol, alcohols. But these are known experimental compositions. And we are here showing two more, uh, which can be cheaper in price as well as in more reactive uh, than pure platinum. So the, this is showing the power of, our, the, of this tool that you can apply for high throughput screen. Let me summarize the key for rational design of the biometallic surface here lies in the controlling of surface coverages of key intermediates. We have to see where is my essential control is. And once you know that, then you can actually do a degree of rate control analysis and you can understand uh, where I want to stop this reaction, how I'm going to engineer my surface. We have seen in case of copper, the key idea was to add a metal which is more dehydrogenating. In nickel, it is the opposite. You want to control the dehydrogenation activity and you want to add probably tin that can help in controlling the activity. And then you can apply a very high throughput screening, for example, in case of platinum, uh, screening both A and AB type of surfaces, and you can come up with new metals. The punchline here is the introduction of machine learning approaches, because now we can show with these approaches, we can try and implement uh, uh, much, much, uh, uh, much, much faster to, uh, methods by which which we can reduce this whole screening process even computationally. Uh, instead of using high performance computing clusters, now we can do it on our laptop once these models are built. But of course, this will take some time in building large databases uh, for implementing such models. Now let me show you another variety of this work, which is you have an ethanol molecule, you know how OH bond is breaking, how CH bond is breaking, how CC bond is breaking. Can you predict larger chemistries, which is like, for example, hydro deoxygenation of biomass derived uh, phenolic molecules. Can you predict these chemistries where CO bond is undergoing scission to make HDO products using CO bond scission in ethanol? And that's really exciting. If you use the same model which we built for a non oxidative dehydrogenation of ethanol, you can check all the ethanol decomposition routes and predict reactivity trends for CC scission for CO scission. Once you know, what is the propensity of transition metal catalyst for breaking CO bond in ethanol? Most likely you can also predict it for the transition metal catalyst activity for much bigger molecules like uh, platform chemicals obtained from biomass, lignin derived aromatics and other stuff. So once you know this, you can start thinking about how do you build the model and predict reactivity trends. We showed this again for step sites because this reaction is also introduced and known to be much more active, the CO bond scission on the step sites experimentally, that we know that for both direct and indirect HDO, the step sites are important and much more reactive than the terrace sites. And we have also shown in the model as when you, once you introduce zinc uh, on the palladium surface at the step sites, you see the activation barriers is significantly reduced for the HDO steps from 71 kilojoule per mole to 55, here is 72.5 to 41. So once we know that the same model and the same sites can be used to predict CO bond scission uh, in the HDO chemistry, we build up this model and we see the reactivity trend. For example, here we have this for the monometallic catalyst and this is for the bimetallic cobalt nickel is greater than nickel iron, then cobalt iron, nickel cobalt. We also see that the cobalt 
is lying much more away as compared to cobalt nickel. So cobalt nickel is sitting right in the eye of the volcano. And from there, we can say that nickel cobalt is greater than cobalt. And that is the selectivity trend, which is also seen in the experiments for the HD of phenol. We also see in experiments, uranium is greater than palladium and about platinum. That is the same trend is predicted here in the red for transition metal catalyst for ethanol, uh, CO bond session in ethanol. And same trends we see in other molecules like guaycol. So with this, uh, this study uh, is published in 2017 by us. And we, we have uh, shown that many other systems, experiment lists, which are much larger molecules, we can predict with simple reactions using ethanol CO bond scission. So that is really exciting that you can use these simple models to predict complex chemistries. However, there are more challenges when we talk about transition metals. We think also about facet dependent activity on transition metal surfaces. For example, when we think about phenol, uh, we have seen uh, that you can use different facets in catalysis. For example, here we use the cube mo molecule, cubic structures, which are palladium 100 surfaces. This is more spherical, and this is uh, octahedra surfaces which is 111. These are all synthesized experimentally. And we have seen that there is a clear trend in selectivity. On cubes, you get cyclohexanone in hydrogenation, while on the spheres and octahedra, we get only cyclohexanol uh, as a main product. And these are really exciting because now, which facet is active and why it is active, that is also playing an important role in catalysis. We explained all of this by showing that 100 surface, the activation energy for cyclohexanone hydrogenation is pretty high as compared to palladium-111 surface, where the reactivity was much lesser and activation energy is about 57 kilojoule per mole. So not, since this is an opening talk, I'm opening up pictures for different catalysis, which we can think about, uh, like complex reaction environments is challenging uh, in catalysis. Now the catalyst materials are interfering, stuff coming from biomass, like fermentation derived impurities. We are also seeing proteins. We are also seeing amino acids interfering with the catalysis. And these are some of the challenges which we would like to understand from microkinetic modeling for understanding reactions step by step, thoughtfully that which steps are influenced by what kind of uh, constituents in the reaction systems. And that's a wholesome picture of catalysis I'm presenting here. Uh, of course, this, this challenge will also be employed in catalyst more and more because once you have the solvent interacting with the catalyst surface, the transition states will behave differently and that will improve or, uh, or may accelerate or may de-accelerate your catalytic reactions at the surfaces. And that is presented in a beautiful picture which we designed on the cover, for example, that you have all of these materials which is now in the reaction system as compared to the vapor phase system where you have a catalyst and a gas phase you have solutions, you have different kinds of impurities interacting with the solvent and uh, with the catalyst surface. And then you have different kinds of products coming out and which may be important for you uh, for a futuristic biorefinery. So all of this has to be taken in consideration. Let me just probe a little bit more on the reactions in solvent. That's really exciting because how you are doing, for example, acid catalyzed reactions in solvent if you change the solvent, the catalysis really change using the same catalyst, everything the same. If you are doing this dehydration reaction, you see on changing from water to THF, the conversion is changed from 6.8% to 50% and selectivity remains the same. So you see the how you change the yield of the product by just changing the solvent. And that is explained by, by the solvation of the Bronsted acid protons in the solvation system how these solvations stabilizes or destabilizes the reactant versus the transition state. So differential stabilization of the transition state complex is formed within the solvent systems is leading to acceleration or deacceleration of these reaction rates. And that's another exciting opportunity. We explained this with CPMD simulations. These are really intense computational simulations where we explain the role of solvents in a much more dynamic environment as compared to previous DFT approaches where they were using static environments, we have shown that in a dynamic environments, water, for example, the activation energy is about 133 kilojoule per mole. And in THF, this is reduced to about 107 kilojoule per mole. That may explain to somewhat partial change in this reactivity at 100 degrees centigrade for this reaction, which we have seen, which we have shown earlier uh, in an experimental work. 
uh, again uh, the deprotonation energy is how the solvent is stabilizing the sol the protons in the solvent systems which are deprotonating in the catalysis are all exciting opportunities which we have shown recently a different model of understanding how deprotonation and shuttling of protons is really important the solvation and protonation is really important and how that determines the activation barriers which are seen experimentally in the reaction so that you know, holds the key idea of engineering the catalyst surfaces for designing reactions in complex reaction environment especially for biorenewable catalysis uh, let me leave you with another note on how the shapes are important we are now thinking about engineering particle shapes again step by step for example on the terrace sites different terrace sites which are exercising passage dependent selectivity control then also for complex reaction environments where different impurities are present like amino acids and proteins interacting with these transition metal surfaces and also we are thinking about engineering the step sites with uh, octophilic metals which can improve these co bond sessions and we are also thinking about how you engineer the corner atoms for example if you have the solvated environment you can make branched acid sites on the corner atoms and that can be designed for acid catalysis from the transition metal so a transition metal acting like an acid catalyst is really really exciting opportunities for catalysis uh, in this in this uh, paradigm let me finish this up with all these thoughts and uh, uh, with thinking and catalysis with my last word which is always faz Uh, inspiration from Faz Ahmed Faz that we are always thinking about catalysis at the molecular level, and there are more exciting informations which we can discern at the molecular level. And this is very much uh, very well uh, said by Faz that so many times for the sake of it, atoms were split, but this curiosity of mine is all the same unsatisfied. Uh, I would like to acknowledge this work. Uh, Fatima which, uh, did almost of this uh, microkinetic modeling. and fatima is now a faculty at nit shrinagar she did most of the work some of the work is done by shalaka uh, she is a faculty in iit hyderabad now in chemical engineering department and tuhin is now a scientist who was at post talk with me uh, most of the work is also done by tuhin uh, he did he is now at indian institute of petroleum and dr intias who is a marie curie post talk at the university of milan along with our collaborator at delaware kansas dehradun ncl pune uh some of the phenol work is done by pune and boeing is nishan and lbnl is deepak dukkar who worked with us on integrating fermentation and catalysis i really thank you a lot uh, for listening to me uh, thank you very much